Good morning class. This is a continuation of our recordings of the weak verb and what I want to show to you today are some of the characteristics of the lamid hay verbs. Lamid hay verbs, if you remember, are verbs whose last root letter is uh, a hay or a yud, depending on how you define it. So we're going to call it a hay for the time being and we're going to uh, carry on looking at it that way until you'll see another video in which I'll explain to you the difference, difference between Lamid Hay and uh, Lamid Yud more clearly. So with that we'll begin looking at them. First of all, there are going to be two rules that I do want you to be aware of. The first one is this, that the beginning of the verbs in this particular group, even though they're weak, the v beginning of the verbs basically remain the same. So there's no real change, if you like, in the hit pa'el, uh, the pl, pu'al, or whatever, the beginning of the verbs with respect to the vowel patterns used is basically the same, so that shouldn't worry you. We're mainly going to be concerned about the ending of the verbs, and that's where the lamid he really comes into effect. That's the first rule. The second rule is that the dagesh remains in the double binyanim. This is really important because the dagesh in that second root letter is still a means of identifying whether you're looking at a pl pu'al or a hit pa'el or any of the other binyanim. So you'll generally, generally find that it remains. There are instances in which it doesn't, but we'll look at those later on. So the first rule we need to remember with the Lamed He is that the ending on the perfect form of the verb with no suffix at all is an A ending. So this could be whatever um, is before it, but what's important to remember is that this third root, root letter, this is a lamid he, the ending is going to have an a vowel, a long a vowel, and that is contrary to the short a vowel we normally saw, particularly with the cal on the cal perfect forms. Let's look at some examples, a couple of examples here. This is a PL form, gila, and you've got the he ending, but more importantly, it's a long a as opposed to this form here, shiber, which is also PL, but we've got the E form here. The A, he ending generally uh, prefers, generally prefers an A vowel, a long A vowel. So we have a gila. Here's another example with the hof al. And we're finishing once again with this long A with the he. That's the last root letter. The last root letter in this case is the Dalit. This is our regular example. I've tried to show all the regular examples, the strong verbs, if you like, in blue to compare them with the weak verbs. So this is our, our case here, Hoshmad. We've got a short A before the last root letter right there. Another rule we, we need to remember is that the with the only with the third feminine singular form, as is written here, the he hardens to a tav. So this is what you'd expect to be the third root letter, which you would normally expect to be a he if we're dealing with a lamid he, but it changes to a tav in this particular case uh, with a he suffix. And this only applies to the third feminine singular forms, but it applies to third feminine singular forms across the board. Um, dealing with the perfect here, of course, but it applies across the board. So whether you're dealing with a kal, pl, pu'al, hif'il, hof'al, nif'al, we're always going to see this change at the end. And this is one of the important changes to look for because it really does uh, alter the expected form of the verb more than you would think. So in this case here, we've got third feminine singular, shavra of the kal, shavra. This is the third root letter here this resh, that's the third root letter of the strong verb. In this case here, we've got gala, gimel lamid, he, that's the, uh, those are the root letters, and the he, as I mentioned before, hardens to this tav, and then you get the additional he added on. That's the kal. Here, just to, as a word of explanation, we've got the meteg, just this little accent here, the meteg, and that's basically just to say that we pronounce this as an a vowel, an a and not an O, because the stress would be over the tav, and it would look like ordinarily a closed, unaccented syllable. That's not the case. Looking at the second example, nishbara, we've got the strong verb over here in blue, nishbara, and oops, let's get back to that. 
And here we've got um, the regular resh, the strong verb, the root is still visible, and you've got the long a, and you've got the he, that's what we'd normally expect. But as I said before, even though it's a nifal, it's a third feminine singular form. And so we've got the he, this is the nun of the nifal the, at the beginning. You've got the gimel lamid, the third root letter, which is normally a he, should be a he. It hardens, if you like, I'm calling it hardening, uh, changes to a tav, and then you've got another he added on the end. So that's niglata, niglata. This is, I mentioned again, it's a very important change uh, morphologically because it really does alter the expected form of the verb. The other rule, the he, which is the third root letter again, this is going to transform into uh, yud with consonantal suffixes. If you remember, the consonantal suffixes are the suffixes beginning with a consonant, such as t in the verb katav, t, uh, to say that I wrote, or tem in katav, tem. You've got that tem, the tav, the tsere, and the mem as the suffix. Because the suffix begins with a consonant, we call it a consonantal suffix. So in those situations, the he, which is the third root letter, will transform to a yud. Let's look at a couple of examples of that. Here we've got the strong verb again in blue, shavarti. T is the ending, the suffix. It's uh, consonantal because it begins with a tav. When we look at the Lamed he form, we see galiti. And so in this case here, this yud is in fact the um, root letter, the he, which was a he, but it transforms into a yud whenever we add this tav suffix onto it, the t suffix onto the end. We've lost the strong to get the weak to get there, but that's not to worry about right now. This is one of the reasons why some grammars will actually say that these forms are not lamid he, but they are in fact lamid yud, because this is theoretically the, the native form. Note again that the beginning of the word here, shavarti and galiti, the beginning, the vowels are the same. It's only the end that really undergoes a change. When we look at the um, hit pa'el form over here, hit halachnu, once again we have a consonantal suffix here, but with the strong verb, it doesn't make a difference because the kaf remains the same. Uh, nu is a consonantal suffix because even though it ends with a vowel, it begins with a consonant, which is the nun. When we look at the weak form, the lamid he form, we've got hit galinu. And once again, gimel lamid, normally we'd expect to see the he, but because of the nun is a consonantal suffix, that he transforms into a yud. And so we end up with the form hit galinu, um, as opposed to something like hit galanu, which is uh, almost what we'd expect. So that's another significant change. And so you need to bear in mind, if it looks like the root letters are gimel, lamid, yud, then think in terms of um, a lamid, he verb. Another rule we need to be aware of is that the he, the third root letter of the lamid, he, it elides with the addition of a vocalic suffix. We spoke just on the previous set of slides about a uh, consonantal suffix, the suffix which begins with a consonant. But the other type of suffix we're going to get are suffixes that begin with a vowel. And these three vowels are expected, the o, the yud, and the u. Those are vowels, basically. And so when a uh, lamid he ends, or, or this, one of these suffixes, sorry, is added to a lamid he verb, we find that the he elides, which basically means it disappears entirely. So we lose sight of it, and this is one of the problems with this particular type of weak verb. We are only left frequently with two uh, of the root letters showing, and it's up to us to figure out what is what is missing. And one case is it 
one case uh, that we we have to investigate is that the end of the verb is missing. There are other instances in which the beginning is missing, but we'll come to that later on. Let's take a look at the uh, examples of this. We've got yichtavu again, the strong verb over here. Oh, get back back again. The strong verb yichtavu right there, and here the vocalic suffix is the vav, the u sound, but there really is nothing. Uh, it doesn't affect the last um, root letter of the strong verb. But with the hey, as I'd mentioned before, ayin lamid hey is the root, but because of this vav suffix on the end, this u suffix on the end, the hey disappears entirely. And so the only uh, remnants, if you like, of the root are the ayin and the lamid. I also want to just quickly mention that we're looking at a what's called a doubly weak verb here because the ayin we've discussed this before with the pe ayin uh, verbs the ayin here is weak in the sense that it alters the expected vowel underneath and so we have the chataf patach here and the um, patach underneath the yud which is very different from this regular strong verb so we have ya'alu and here we've got uh, the other another example in the kal the kal perfect this time we've got katvu is what it would normally look like but because of the vocalic suffix we uh, remove the hey and then we're left with this form galu uh, which is uh, quite common so we have to be careful to um, recognize the change last change we're going to see is the um, e uh, vowel added before the hey. This suffix is on the imperfect forms of the verb. The imperfect forms of the verb, which is obviously quite common, uh, but we need to definitely need to be aware of that. Whenever a verb basically finishes in e, we need to think in terms of a lamid hey verb. Taking a look at a couple of examples, we've got the yish bor as the strong verb in this case. Yish bor. Um, regular O sound, I O type verb. Here we've got, again, I mentioned the the fact that we've got a doubly weak verb and the ayin is causing problems because it demands an A vowel and it doesn't like uh, the schwa, uh, vocal schwa underneath it. So we have this patach, chataf uh, patach. So we've got the two A vowels there, but that's nothing to do with the lamid hey as it is to do with the ayin uh, that appears as the root one in this case. What I really want to show you is just the e eh vowel here, the segol together with the hey, which is what we'd expect in the imperfect forms. Ya'ale, ya'ale, that's the kal, Im, um, imperfect third masculine singular. And with the strong verb, titalech is the pl, second masculine uh, singular of the imperfect. And the second masculine singular of the perfect with a lamid hey would be tit gale. And again, the imperfect with the e eh sound right at the end. So um, I recommend you really uh, go look at these rules again. Make a list of these rules in your note making to help you identify the this this particular type of verb and i also recommend just as an exercise that you go to jonah chapter one let's say look at each of the words and see from the notes that you've made from the rules that we've written down try to identify and circle all of the lamid hay forms that you can see there with that said um i'll call it a day we'll call it quits for now and we, I'll see you back in class and we'll uh, do some exercises on this in the weeks to come.